Hi, my name is Stephanie, and today is gonna be a real personal video. Actually, I think it's more like it's personal because my hair isn't done and my face isn't done, which, I mean, actually, I think on this channel is pretty normal. So I'm doing the assumptions tag. So Sammy says that they assume I grew up in a Christian home, and that is actually true. Um, my family both went to a Bible college, um, and they were really into, you know, being like pastors and stuff like that. We had like a home church kind of thing going on, and uh, yeah, so yeah, my family, like my parents were always Christian, and that's how I grew up. And then Sammy also <laughs> sent another one in, and you probably kept your friends from elementary school and you haven't found another what you would consider close friend since pre-2010. Uh, 2010 for me was 10th grade, so, um, no, actually. <laughs> I didn't always form really close relationships with people my same age. So in elementary school, well, like I would have one friend I would stick with for a long time. I had like one friend specifically in elementary school that I would stick with and then kind of loosely held on to a few people in different groups uh, during middle school and then I went to online school and that greatly diminished my friend group. So yeah, um, my actual like the people I feel our closest friends in my life right now are actually older than me and I don't think they were actually like my friends friends until after 2010 so a whole big nope on that one okay so this next one it comes from Carol she says okay so one thing I assumed about you actually I have had counsel countless people assume about me I assumed you were not really friendly because your facial expression is more serious in your photos and I find that extremely funny because many people used to accuse me of being a snob before they got to know me and I found with you after getting to know you it was completely not true either um, I mean, I'm just, I don't like people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, are we gonna get a visit from Nala? We're gonna get an interruption from Nala. Am I not really friendly? Actually, <laughs> I think a lot of people don't think I'm friendly, which is funny because I always go out of my way to be nice to people. And when I mean, what I mean is like, I'm so scared that someone is gonna think that I'm trying to be mean or something. But actually, like, when I'm fed up with you, <laughs> I'm fed up with you. Like, I don't deal with you um, anymore. So, I mean, am I a not really friendly person? Actually, probably. I don't think I'm like a jerk. We don't try to be. I don't know, but I'm glad Carol thinks that I'm nice and friendly. Okay, so Angela says, I assume that you like to organize special events and that as a child, you probably like to put on little plays or shows. I think everybody to an extent did that a little bit uh, when it comes to plays and shows. I did a little bit with one of my friends and it didn't exactly end well. I was more like play with toys than I was with like putting on a play or a show or anything. And as for organizing special events, no. <laughs> um, that's terrifying and I would 100% forget something. I actually don't see the point for so many events it's kind of ridiculous i like to do like videos and stuff and i like the idea of doing like special stuff like that but when it comes to like actual events and all the details and all that stuff that mm, and i don't even like to go to events <laughs> half the time so no jacob says peer pressure went in one ear and out the other in some forms yes and in others no when it came to like trends and stuff like that i didn't care like I, none of that stuff like mattered to me um if someone was like come on stephanie do this or whatever i'd be like no but if it wasn't overt a lot of the times it did affect me I acted just like my supposed best friend throughout uh, elementary and later on reflecting on our actions they weren't great and it was really just me trying to like be like her and do what she was doing so in a, in a sense that was peer pressure but if it was like overt peer pressure like um, you should be like us and you should come do things that you shouldn't do or say things you shouldn't say that usually just 
didn't bother me except for I had this time where I decided I wanted to cuss because no one seemed to listen to me so I just thought like if I cuss then people would pay attention to me that lived uh, for about two weeks <laughs> no one listened to me anyway so Katie Katie said you like to be prepared and hate to show up late to things yeah I like to be prepared because it's super awkward when you're not. I don't like showing up late to things. However, I'm not good at getting myself places on time. Anna says, I assume that you didn't come from poverty, trauma, or dysfunction. I assume that you had a stable, secure upbringing and have a close-knit, supportive family. Uh, that's partially true. Um, I didn't come from poverty in the sense of like um, living on the streets or anything. Uh, my parents did divorce, and when that happened, we did end up technically low income. Like, I had free lunches. Uh, we were on, like, the Christmas tree thing or whatever, where people, like, buy you gifts for a year or two. So we had times of being lower income, but we weren't, like, poverty-stricken, if that makes sense, uh, in the financial sense. Uh, trauma or dysfunction... Uh, I would say divorce is a form of dysfunction, but I wouldn't say it's nearly as bad as maybe something traumatic or really dysfunctional uh, would say. So in general, that's true. Um, I think that for the most part, my family was somewhat, <laughs> somewhat uh, stable and secure. They did what they could, but uh, the the divorce situation kind of doesn't match this, you know. And I wouldn't say that that was the best way that it happened or anything like that. But I don't think that it was like severe trauma or anything like that. And as for having a close-knit supportive family, I would also say... <laughs> I, I love my family. I'm sure they love me. I don't know that close-knit is the right word. Uh, generally supportive, I guess. Yeah, I think I just took way too much time to answer that question. Ashley for Christ says... He he says, I assume that you are a straightforward, nice, and genuine person. I don't know that I'm that straightforward in person. I can be, I think, more than other people in some situations, especially when I don't understand. Now I've learned to just be like, I don't understand what you're saying. What are you trying to say? But I've learned how to try to not hurt people's feelings. And so uh, that part probably isn't like the most straightforward. Or if I'm trying to communicate something I want, it's also hard for me to be straightforward. Nice and genuine. Nice is subjective, <laughs> I feel like. And genuine is just kind of, I don't know how to be anybody else. I think I've tried to act like other people, but at the end of the day, if I want to communicate with you, I want to be genuine, especially online. I don't know. I think I'm better at being straightforward and genuine and stuff like that online because I don't have to worry about living up to some standard that I feel that the world is trying to put on me <laughs> in person. Flying Falcon says, you're actually an NT playing a joke. Uh, no. <laughs> and I don't know who would think that that would be a joke. Like, honestly, that would not... I don't know who would find that funny, like, to be like, oh yeah, I'm just pr just pretending, it's just a joke, guys. I'm not actually autistic. I'm not actually on the spectrum. Like, to me, that'd be really, really weird. But no, I am not an NT actually playing a joke. Twitch and Moan says, I assumed you were very confident, perhaps even naturally confident in regards to public speaking. So... He actually has talked to me in person before <laughs> and told me this and it really blew me away because I've never really considered myself a confident person, especially with public speaking. But I don't know, I feel like in my head there becomes this dilemma and it's either you do your best and pull it out of somewhere or don't do anything and this situation becomes even more awkward. So which one's worse? And so I go with pull something out of here and go for it. And you know, it's interesting. The more that I think about it, the when I'm in like a conversational situation, I start to kind of settle into that confidence when I know what I'm talking about and I feel more comfortable with the people around me. I don't know how well I would do by myself. Nikki Ray says, when I first met you, I assumed you were going to hate me, hello. So she is actually from one of my vlogs I did for Vlogmas when we went to the store to get stuff. And 
she really thought I was going to hate her. I, I didn't really. Ah! No, I wouldn't hate you. I think I was just like, I don't know who you are. Which is funny because like I knew kind of who she was. She, okay, so her brother and my sister were dating. And I remember like the first time going with my sister because my mom made my sister take me everywhere. Uh, we went over her boyfriend's house and I remember her being like, there's a, there's a girl here, his sister, who's around your age. Like maybe you can play with her or whatever, hang out with her. And I'm just like, stranger danger. I remember her telling me like, oh, hey, you know, my brother's dating your sister. And I was like, okay. But then we started hanging out and being friends. Like I didn't, I did not hate you at all. Oh my gosh. That's so like sad that you would think that. Okay. So Joshua says, I thought you'd ignore me horribly when we first met. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why does everyone think I'm going to be terrible to them? I hope not. You know, anybody who takes the time to like comment and interact with my videos and my content anywhere to me is awesome and I'd love to interact with you because if anyone like honestly thinks I'm worth like listening to or caring about I think that's really awesome honestly because throughout a lot of my life no one has cared or at least it felt that way and so people who are awesome enough to take time to just even say hi and stuff like that that's really cool to me I don't know that I can always hold a conversation because I'm really bad at uh, keeping up with my <laughs> my friends in real life, but to to be able to kind of say hi and everything like that is really cool. So thank you all so much for being a part of this video by sending in your assumptions about me. <laughs> I had fun being able to answer them for you and address the drama, the tea, the whatever. I'm feeling extra weird right now. Well, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you want to hear from me every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Also, something that I did want to point out to you on my main, main channel. <laughs> Stephanie Bethany, I do have a Patreon, so if you are someone who already enjoys all my content, a lot of you guys who are subscribed to this channel are subscribed to most all of my channels, so if you're interested in checking that out, you can. If you feel like supporting me monetarily, you can. If you don't want to, don't feel pressured to. It's totally fine, but I just wanted to let you know that it exists and also that Nala has already made an appearance on the Patreon only, patron only, whatever, discussion part because you know, she's like that. Anyway, I hope that you're having a wonderful week and I hope you'll see me in my next video. Bye!